Hey everyone, welcome back to another episode of the Happy Even After podcast. So today we are talking about letting go of the ring. And my guest today is the perfect person to have this conversation with. So let me introduce you to Shreya Mehta. Um, She is a fourth generation diamond business family, and she knows the ins and outs of the diamond industry. So with her company, Sell Ring New York City, she strives to disrupt the diamond market, and she's here today to talk about your diamond. What do we do with it? Do we keep it or do we let it go? And the answer isn't so simple because often the ring carries such an emotional attachment. So Shreya, welcome. Thank you, Renee. Thank you so much for that warm introduction. How are you doing today? Beautiful. It's a nice hot day in New York City. I know. And uh, I love summer, so I'm good. I know. <laughs> me too. I'm never going to complain about the heat. <laughs> so, all right, let's talk about the ring because this is the thing that comes up in every single divorce that I think I've ever done is somebody says, you know, what do I do with my ring? And after we get the legal questions of what happens to the ring out of the way, Um, you know, now they have to make a decision on do they keep it or do they let it go? So what are your thoughts on that? You know, what do you do with your wedding band, your diamond at the end of a divorce? So I'm a big believer in energy. So that's just me personally. I feel like after a divorce, you want to kind of let go of the energy you had with that ring and with that relationship and move forward. So I truly believe that if you are emotionally ready, and that's really important because I will say, you know, you should let go of the ring because then you can get something different or you can use the money for something that you really need to do in life. But I just feel like your energy changes. That's like the biggest focus. That's like my number one thing. But Emotionally, you need to be ready. Am I ready to let go of this relationship? Am I ready to go of things that go along with this relationship? Mm. So that's my first reaction. When somebody asks me, what do I do? I'm like, are you ready emotionally to let go? And if you are, then I say yes, because that rock, you know, if you talk about diamonds and you look, talk about gold, these are materials and they do carry vibrations. Yeah. Like, you know, we always talk about like, you know, in the yoga world, we talk about everything we touch carries a vibration and, you know, you want to let go, you want to move forward with it. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, I remember going through my own divorce and I've had friends and family say to me like, oh, turn it into something, turn it into a pendant. And my initial reaction is, oh my God, why do I want to wear that to at my heart? Like, why am I going to put something that signified something that didn't work out the way I wanted to and put it so close to my heart or open my jewelry box and have that as a reminder? Like, I like my jewelry to be reminders of like really good positive things. And so that was my feeling about it. Um, And so I love, absolutely love your take of it being energy. And, you know, that's, those are the conversations that I even have about like letting go of the house, for example. Right. And I, you know, in the end, it, it, we want to be happy, right? What's our goal in yeah. life? You want to be happy. You want to wear jewelry. Why do you wear jewelry? Because you want to look pretty. Yeah. You want to have fun. You want to feel empowered. I, I wouldn't see someone going through a divorce and wanting to hold on to any piece of jewelry because I don't think it would make you happy. It's a simple thing, you know? Yeah, yeah. I, I yeah. know, right. And, and you know that and that's a good point because beyond just the ring, like some other jewelry that was a gift that all of a sudden it may remind you of a time that you don't want to remember every time you, you right. put it on. So yeah. such a good point. Yeah. Okay. So now let's pretend that someone said I'm ready to let go of the ring and they think that their ring is worth uh, $20,000 because that's what the appraisal says. So how do we yes. actually know what the value of a ring is? So great question. And it is something that comes up every day. Um, so let's bust the first myth. An insurance appraisal is definitely not the real value. You know, everyone should know that. Um, When you get a ring and you want to try to sell it, you want to get an estimate on it. You want to get a real appraisal. We call it the real appraisal. Not a very original name, but it's called a real (laughs) appraisal. And that's the price you will get if you sell the ring. So if a ring is appraised, say, for $20,000, very high chances the actual price of the ring would be half of that. 
like oh. that's the average you know increase in insurance like you know half or even one third and people are like oh my god i thought this ring was twenty thousand dollars and it comes down to like eight thousand dollars and they're like i don't want to sell it but mm. the truth is they hyperinflate insurance appraisals but when you even buy diamonds or if you're even selling diamond jewelry you will see that there is a completely different market it's a completely different price point so what we do at sell ring is we offer a complimentary estimate and especially to Renee and all her friends, I mean, I want to extend this, that just reach out to us. You can get estimates on your jewelry, real appraisals. And I think that's really important for you to know, even if you're not ready today, that will hold a similar value mm. in, you know, in years because the diamond market does go up and down. So there's always going to be a little bit of a fluctuation in market prices, but it shouldn't go higher or lower than 5%. You know, it shouldn't go too drastic a change. Yeah. So if someone says that they bought their ring for 15,000, it appraised for 20, should they expect to get back what they actually bought it for? Um, it depends. Uh, and that is a great question once again, because sometimes you buy jewelry and it's a brand name so, and mm -hmm. brand names are already increasing, you know, they, they just add, extra value uh, because of their brand awareness. But I feel like diamonds usually retain their value. Um, gold also does. But what doesn't retain value is fashion because mm. fashion changes. So you might get something that was like amazing 15 years ago and it was like you bought it for $15,000 unless it has an antique value to it. If no one's going to wear it, it's going to be melt value. And melt value means nobody wants to design anymore. We'll take the diamonds, we'll take the gold. And that means your price will go down, hmm. right? Because the design is not really sellable, resellable. Nobody wants it kind of thing. Right? So let's say that it is a designer. So someone comes in with a Tiffany or Takori, you know, one of those designers, do they get more money for it? Or are you just still looking at the value of the diamond? No, with absolutely with brand names, they are the easiest to sell. Like we always ask people, you know, if you have a brand name like Tiffany or, or any any brand name, or if you have an like a GIA certificate. So those are the two things I did want to bring up. If you have a certificate with the diamond value or an appraisal that also says the gold value, the weight, that's very easy to calculate how much it would be. But to answer your question, a Tiffany would be definitely the same price that you bought it maybe higher depending on the you know demand of it so sometimes tiffany comes out with uh, exclusive unique lines that they don't reproduce they don't make it again mm. those go up in value but like the classic items that they keep on producing every year those will kind of retain value they won't go up in price so I want to go into exactly how your company works in a minute. But before mm -hmm, I do sure. that, um, I'm just really curious about, um, so if someone has a diamond and says, okay, um, I have this designer diamond, I'm going to give it to you and you're going to take it and you're going to give them a great price for it. And you decide that this is a diamond that you can resell. What do you say about the energy attached to the diamond that's being passed from one person to the other? Like, how do you clean or smudge that energy so that the new person getting it like has doesn't have that kind of that old vibe yeah. and ickiness from the relationship that didn't work from the previous owner? So this is this is this is where I come in as like a woman. So we yeah. we have uh, we do a lot of like energy work in the office. Actually, we're at Rockefeller Center. I light my candle. I do my incense sticks. I I think it's really just about having positive energy. Also, is like you know I I really believe that you know when you enter we enter with like a blessing, and I think it's about clearing the energy and it's really on a mindset level. That's mm -hmm. going to be the truth. Um, and we practice a lot of things that we do, you know, spiritually that we cleanse the air. So that's something we do in our office space. Um, 
But I do think it's a mindset. And I think sometimes, you know, if we are talking about relationships, it might not be meant for this particular one, but that person might be amazing for someone else, right? Mm. So it doesn't mean that there's an ickiness attached to something. It just means it's meant for somewhere else. Oh, I love that. I love that take on it. So I knew that you were going to have an awesome answer for that, just because that it's just I don't want to <laughs> I don't want to sound voodoo. You know, it's like, oh, I'm doing it. I'm not no. voodoo. It's, it's just more like, you know, positive energy. And like, yeah. you know what? Everything is meant for somebody. Right. Yeah. And it just it, sometimes it's in the wrong place at the wrong time. You need to shift it. That's how the energy shifts. Yeah, absolutely. So I'm, I'm all here for the woo woo. So don't worry about that. <laughs> all right. So okay. let, let's talk about cell ring and how it works. So now someone says, I have this ring. Um, why go to you and what, or what does the process look like? And why are you different than other buyers? So, you know, we have a parent company. It's a wholesale diamond company. As you know, we are, I mean, I'm a fourth generation, uh, you know, and our company has been around for decades. Uh, we've always been selling diamonds, but what we realized is throughout the years that we've been diamond, buying diamonds from our customers, which are retailers. And then I think right just during COVID, and I was I was thinking we're getting all this all this jewelry back from retailers. Why don't we go directly to the consumer and mm. offer a transparent, easy and you know, I would say like a trustworthy place that a yeah. consumer can come directly to sell, uh, you know, your ring, your jewelry. And I don't want to just say ring it can be any piece of jewelry. So the reason we founded this is that I found a gap for someone to go and sell their jewelry. Either it's pawn shops, which are yeah. really shady, or they're so high end that you're kind of like, oh, I think I'm, you know, you're just feeling uncomfortable. Yeah. So we wanted to create like a really peer level. We're just like you, um, just send us, you know, and I'll share the process, but we've made mm -hmm. the process very transparent. And, you know, because of technology, we wanted to make it easy that someone can try to sell their jewelry sitting at home. You don't have to come to New York City into our office. You are welcome now, but you don't have to. And the process is very simple. Um, you can go onto our website, sellring.nyc, and we you click on sell your jewelry. There is a form. Uh, you can enter your details, your name, your phone number, pictures of the jewelry, description, whatever you know, and any appraisals, any documentation. So as I said, uh, you know, if you have bought a diamond ring in the past couple of years, usually you get a certificate, like a GIA certificate mm -hmm. or an EGL certificate. So attaching all those things and we will get back to you within 20, 24 hours, somebody will get back to you with either more questions or we will just directly give you, oh, we can offer you this much, would you be interested? And mm. if you are interested, then we start the conversation of, great, we're going to send you a shipping label. So there's no charge to you, right? There's no extra expense to you guys. It is on us. We will send you the shipping label. The shipping label is insured. So people always have that concern. Oh, I don't know if I should send my jewelry. I'm just like, what if it gets lost? Right. Everything is insured. And, you know, it depends also on whatever you know, the jewelry is, we will insure it up to a mutual agreed amount. And once it's insured, you will send us the jewelry, we will inspect it. So we always inspect it like before giving a final price. And once that's there, that whole process, we also do like video calls. So we actually record the package coming into our office, us opening it up, the appraisal looking at the jewelry. And if the client is available, we just video FaceTime, like, hey, here's your jewelry. We got mm. it. This is what it looks like. This is, you know, it's completely everything you said it was. We're happy to just send you a check right now. And that's it. And so we believe in giving a check immediately if everything is just agreed on, if the price is right. Let's put it that way. And what if someone sends it to you and says, you know, I think I've changed my mind. I'm going to hold on to it. Or maybe I don't agree on the price. What would the next step right. be? very simple. We pack it up, we ship it back, no charge to you. 
and it's just the beginning of a relationship that will work out in the future. So this is so different than bringing it to like a pawn shop, right? So like right. you're bringing it yeah. to a pawn shop. What, what do people kind of expect to get offered on that compared to what you're doing? So, I mean, you know, I have nothing against pawn shops. So disclaimer out there, <laughs> um, we do have pawn shop customers. So <laughs> definitely do not want to rub them in any wrong direction. But I'll tell you how we are different. We are different because we have... 6,000 retailer customers. So the chance that we are able to resell is so much higher because we are in the business of selling diamond jewelry. Pawn shops are in the business of, you know, getting jewelry, but they don't, they can't sell it the way we can sell it. So they're not going to be able to offer a price that we can. Because for us, it's like, great, I got this ring. I'll put it in our inventory. Our, our turnover is four times a year. It's not it's just going to be immediate. So we're able to offer you a higher value because of that. And I'll tell you how we're different from other competitors is that the biggest model is people use the auction model. So I'm not going to name other names, but like if you go online and you try to sell your jewelry, you can put your jewelry on other people's platforms at the price you want, but then it might get, you know, it might get sold after months, years, or not sold. With us, you're guaranteed mm. a check in overnight. Mm. Oh, so, it, so it's, yeah. I mean, it really is a seamless way for someone who doesn't want to just walk into a pawn shop or even put it on online themselves and do it that way. And, you know, you're going to a professional. Um, and what I love about what you offer and the experience you offer is how personal it is and the acknowledgement of like it's it is it's letting go of something and it's so much more than just an exchange of like a ring for money it's like really like i feel like it's closing it's that final chapter that final closure in that part of your story and then you know they can take that money and go buy something else so that's my next question is um do you also sell directly to customers Yes, we do. So, you know, if you are selling to us, you would become what's known as a private customer and we would be able to help you out with wholesale pricing at that point. But I love what you said because, you know, as a as a woman, right, and this is a woman owned mm. business, I really believe that, you know, you want to have a, a, a closing experience. You want to have a good experience. Like jewelry is so precious and so valuable. You don't want to just yeah. like go and dump in and get the, you, you don't want to have that, yeah. like, that transactional behavior. You want to have this thing, you know what? I know it's, you know, you have a smoother experience. Let's put it that way. And we understand the emotional impact of this. So we, we're really here to kind of handhold. Mm -hmm. And, you know, if there's any questions, we're available. You can see us, you know, there are no robots. It's yeah. no chatting. It's just real people call us, video call us. You know, and, and we'll be there because we're happy to answer any questions anybody has. Sharia, is it rare to have a woman owned business in the diamond industry? I mean, I've been to the diamond district and I like I just remember walking through, you know, the 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 counter after counter after counter. And most were there were men there or run by men or yes. owned by men. Yes. Yeah, uh, it is very very patriarchal is that the right word yes it's a it's a it's a man-run industry uh, it has always been and it still is so it's really difficult unless you are an amazing woman designer or yeah you know I, I I really feel blessed that I was born into the industry and I also remember I mean I grew up in Belgium Antwerp which is the center of the diamond world and I remember when I used to walk with my father down the street, they were like, oh, why are you here? Are you here for lunch? And I'd be like, no, I work here, you know? Mm. And it's it's such a, you know, it's such a upward hill for yeah. women in our industry. But I do think that there is so much value. There's so much value because I think women can understand women on a different level. Yeah. I mean, and that's what I love about it because you're – I don't know. And listen, I, I love all all of our men out there who are the good guys. Like, you know, you're all great. But how many men are going to look at that ring and have a conversation about the emotional attachment or the energy of it? I just don't think yes. that it happens. And 
Yeah. Um, and that's like that's why when we met, I adored you and said like, okay, we have to we have to have a chat because you know it's a common conversation and people don't know what to do and sometimes they stick their ring in like a safe and they just let it sit there and because they don't know what else to do with it and to have that guidance and someone kind of holding your hand who's not just trying to like out oh, to get you, which I think sometimes it feels like that when you're trying to trade something in, like are you being scammed? But you're really coming from a genuine place of helping people move on and providing value and you know, mm-hmm. a legitimate, authentic, like real conversation about this. So it's not just like turn it in, slide it over a counter and walk away and get in your car and cry. Like you are making this kind of an experience. And and it's so uh, it's interesting what you said, because I've had so many people who contact me and they'll say, "Oh, my ring was lying in the safe for like a decade," and I feel like, "Oh my god, I, that that feels that 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 hurts me," because I just feel like if you have jewelry, you should wear it. That that's what it's for. If it's lying in a safe, it's not living. Yeah, you know. Yeah, and. And it's it's just like everything we have in our life, right? We all have so many physical material things. But having, for example, those clothes, which are like in the top, top, top yeah. left part of your cabinet that you're never going to touch. Like, why is it really there? Is it just gathering dust? Like, it, it makes everything else dirty, you know? Yeah. So I really believe in in that energy of also like what you have, you know, either you wear it or you use that yeah. to make an amazing thing like I know you and I were like talking about like I I really believe like so many people like what do I buy with this I'm like buy yourself an empowerment ring yeah you know do something that makes you positive and have good energy like going forward can they take the ring to you and say that I want to buy I want to turn it in trade it for something else and kind of do an exchange um Mm -hmm. with for another piece absolutely that's totally doable Huh. We're open to all those conversations. I'm, I'm thinking about the jewelry in my like box that, <laughs> that's collecting, collecting dust and not being worn. <laughs> I have a, I have a string of pearls that I don't wear. Like I'm not a pearl person, and I'm like, what am I ever going to do with these things? Like I, I don't wear pearls, so I'm like, what? Hmm. <laughs> Maybe. Maybe. And, you and don't do I, pearls. I, I will, no, and that's why I, I just want to also say like. The, the the advantage of coming to us is because of the diamond knowledge. So I would say, yeah. you know, uh, anything to do with diamonds, where that's our expertise. That's where you'll get your best value. Mm. And, you know, even gold, of course, we would be able to. But like precious stones and mm. other things, those are really hard to resell or to sell. And that's just like, you know, all around, all across. Yeah. Um I, I just, even for me, I have you know semi semi precious jewelry, and I'm my I just don't sell it. I kind of end up like yeah. I don't know because the value it, it's just you don't get it, and it's really hard to um, analyze if it's real, not real. There's a it's really complicated process. Yeah. So, yeah. All right. So what does someone do? What are the first steps if someone's listening and says, I am going to go blow the dust off my ring that I don't wear and I'm going to contact Shreya. Where do they go and how do they start that process? Bellring.nyc. Uh, we are on Instagram. Very easy. DM us over there. You can also see a lot of, we, we kind of want to share, you know, all these, uh, you know, all the stories we've had, all the testimonials we've had, and what type of jewelry is sold to us. So you can go to our Instagram or our website, so www.sellring.nyc, and you can just submit a form. All you have to do is put your email address, your name, and an image, and somebody will get back to you. So it's awesome. really one, two, three. Just Just put the energy out there, and we will get back to you. Awesome. And I'll put all those links in the show notes. So final question, you are disrupting the diamond industry uh, single handedly by what you're doing. So what is next for you? What is in the future of cell ring? Well, I I really um, I'm going slow and steady. I I feel like uh, I'm in no overnight rush. I want to be here and I want to be solid and secure. Like Mm -hmm. I really want to be there 
for the women. Like I want to support women. So when we think about like what's in the future, I feel like this is in my future. I want to keep on doing this because I really want to support women and I just hope to reach more women. That's oh, it. I love that. And and that's why you're here today having this conversation. <laughs> so thank you yeah. so much, girl. I appreciate you. And it's so nice to chat. Thank you, Renee. Thank you so much.